Hi, Grandma here. This is the code for Monster Showtime. I produced a previous video which showed the entire Monster Showtime running from beginning to end. You can find that video in this same blog at wecodemakecode.com. You can also find it on our YouTube channel, which is, guess what? We Code Make Code. We Code Make Code. Okay, this is the code. Looks a little complicated, but it isn't uh, because uh, if you break it down into pieces. Before we get started with that, it's a good idea if we take just a quick look at how the code starts. There it goes. Builds a stage, flashes monster showtime, monster showtime, and then goes to the first monster. About half Where's the first monster? Here it comes. Okay. It, about halfway through, it, it, it puts a skylight in the sky. And at that point, if the monster is combustible, it combusts. Goes to the next monster, gives him a little fame on the stage, and then goes to the next monster. Now, it will keep on doing that until it gets to the end. But we're not going to do that now. Okay, let's look at the code. This part of the code initializes things. It sets up the two arrays, one of which contain the monster monsters and the other which, which contain the monster names in the same order. It also initializes a few variables that are never changed. It also sets the origin and positions the player. Now this section of the code is the main, we'll call it the loop of the code. This is the main control code. There's the run, which we'll talk about more in a minute, and there's the do one monster. Basically, run sets up a loop to loop through all the monsters. But before it does that, it, it um, initializes the show by um, flashing monster showtime behind the stage and by giving that little message to the user about F1 will turn off the screen log. The stage, this section of the code builds the stage. Now, I'll talk about that more later, but the stage is built in pieces using on chat commands. The reason for that is so that the stage can be built really fast because each of these on, stat, um, these on chat commands run at the same time. So it's like several times faster than building it with just one long function. Now, this part of the code is the end processing. So basically, uh, when after the program has run through all the monsters, it will then do the end, which is kind of cute, and I'll show you that in a minute. Now, this part of the code is kind of beautiful. I wish I had this on a poster. This is my fast print. Fast print prints for a string. It prints the character simultaneously, not one by one sequentially, like this um, make code print command does. In order to do that, it has to have a different little function. See all these different little functions, which we'll talk about later, for each of the characters in the string. Okay, that is the overview of the program. Now, let's look at the run command, the run function, sorry. Okay, we knew that was a function. There it is. Run. I wonder if we can, okay. So there's run. What it does, first it teleports the player to a new location. Then it checks to be sure the number of monsters is the same as the number of names. Because if it's not, the program will do something unexpected. It gives a little message down here if the number is not the same, but it usually just goes straight on. Now, why would the number not be the same? Players sometimes fiddle with the code, which is a fun thing you can do with Make Code for Minecraft. But fiddling with the code can cause errors. Now, if everything is cool, then the program flashes the monster showtime words behind the screen. It then shows the little instructions about F1. It then sets the print block orange, which is the color that the monster name will be displayed in. It then goes through this loop. 
It has an index from zero to the number of monsters minus one. Now you know it's num why it's minus one, don't you? It's because counting starts at zero. It then moves the player to a new location and sets the new origin. It sets the global variable index, IDX global, to index. Now IDX index, it's really just the monster number. It's the number in the array. It's the element of the array that's going to be processed right now. It then calls do one monster to actually do one monster, build a new stage, display the monster, and so on. After all the monsters are displayed, it calls the function to teleport the player again, and it runs the end function. See? I told you that would be easy. Now, let's look at do one monster. A little longer, but no more challenging. Okay, I can't quite read it there. How about there? Okay. Okay, first, do one monster plants a sunflower besides the user. Why would I do that? Well, I just like everybody to really understand that the that the stage and all this code is assuming that everything is built to the east of the of the player. And as you know, a sunware sunflower always faces east. So if you want to know where east is, just plant yourself a sunflower. Calls make stage to do the stage. That was easy. It then, let's just look at that. It, it, we have a little, no, I'll come back to that later. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, we then set the print text, which is going to be the name of the monster, to the monster name in this variable, global variable, gets the monster name from the monster name array. It then calculates the Z coordinate because you want the name to be centered. So Z is, um, that's north and south. So the Z direction uh, centers, centers the name on the state, on the, centers the name, okay. Then it sets the print position to something something Z coordinate. Well, the something something there is just determined by trial and error. You want it back far enough and high enough so that it looks right where it should look on the stage. That's kind of fun to do. Then calls the function print text. No, print fast. And it does print fast. Then it teleports the player to the origin, right, that is right up next to the stage, so that when these monsters are spawned in a row, the player is looking right at them. It then pauses uh, a second for the player to contemplate the beautiful monsters up close. Then it starts a little loop where it moves the player back one block at a time and lets the, uh, so that this player can see more and more of the stage. Then pauses again so that the player can, comp uh, can see the monsters. It then makes the stage roof window. At this point, that's really, it makes a skylight would be a better name for this. And when it, some of the monsters are combustible, you knew that, didn't you? So if they get in sunlight, they will turn, get on fire. So some of them do combust. And then it pauses a couple more seconds to let everybody see what has happened. Okay, now, Going to the right here, we have the code that flashes the monster showtime. It's really, really easy. We, do, we have this print position, which we figured out by trial and error. We make the stage. And then we repeat two times, print fast for monster and print fast for Showtime, but they're each in a different color. That makes a really nice, uh, nice effect, which I'm sure that you remember. And this is the little code that prints the instruction to the user about using F1. Okay, this whole code right here, see it's pretty long. This code builds the stage. Here's the function that does it by calling these four chat commands. And I, I fiddled a little bit figuring out which was the optimal kind of uh, partition of these, of the, I could have built this stage in just one 
really long, 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 long series of fill statements. But first of all, I couldn't get it on the screen, but it would run really, really slow. Now let's review how fast this run. I have this little function here called stage test. If we go over here, okay, forgot to start it. I don't start it, it doesn't run. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to stage test it. Look at that! Was that fast or what? Let's see that one more time. Okay. See, it was almost instant. Now, you can experiment with doing this sequentially, but believe me, you would be sitting here waiting for each of these things to build. I like things happening fast. Okay, the next little code here is the end code. All it does is it um, prints the end in the sky, and then it runs, um, this, here it is. It prints the end in the sky, and it spawns a bunch of monsters, all of them, in fact, right in front of the player. So I have a in test here. Let's go look at that. There's the end. I have a separate test for it because I wanted to test it separately and fine tune where the print is appearing, fine tune where the monsters are being spawned. But this turned out to be exactly the right position. And gee, I don't even want it to end. I just want to sit here and watch the monsters. But we better go. Now, unfortunately, those monsters are going to be kind of loud. Okay, now next is this delicious print fast. Print fast works as follows. The, uh, you know what? I don't need that anymore. That's cool. Bye. <clears throat> Okay, so this is all it is is a loop, which uh, for every character in print text, you know, I could test to be sure it's not longer than 21 characters, but oh well, nothing really happens because it just doesn't call a function if it is longer, but and you won't see all the text displayed. But if I wanted to improve this, that is what I would do. You didn't want to know all that. <clears throat> okay, for each time through this loop, for each character, it runs chat command print underscore and then it concatenates that with a print index so that would be running print zero print underscore one print underscore two and so on and so on and so on with a parameter of print index so it passes as a parameter uh, the index of the character um, that is to be printed now, it presses the index because run chat commands do not have string arguments. If we could have text arguments, then I would actually pass the text character and wouldn't have to bother with that index. Each of the print, the, there's all these different prints in routines. Look at that. I thought I saw a mistake. No, I, they're all there. Okay. So each of these print routines do, do exactly the same thing, but they do it a little differently because of this argument, which I call arg underscore print index. And um, this argument is unique for each routine. It has the same name, but remember arguments are local to the on chat, so they don't interfere with each other as these all run simultaneously. So um, it prints whichever character um, that the index specifies. It uses the print block, which was set earlier to orange. It starts with a print position that was figured out earlier to be up there on the screen in just the right place. But then it prints it at, a Z, um, at the Z location that's calculated 
here. So it prints the first character in one place and the second one just to the right of that and the next one just to the right of that and just, just to the right of that. So that's what this calculation does. All of them are just the same except their name is different. So if you want to just have four, it's really easy. You just copy this routine four times and only put four of them in your program. Okay, that is the code. Let's watch again now that we understand how print works. And let's watch print work. Now watch carefully. We will use, uh, we'll just run the whole program. Okay, see, all the characters in Monster are appearing at the same time. Show times appearing at the same time. It's not printing things one by one. So, and I'm sure you know how make codes print routine works. You see one character, then you take a coffee break, and then you see the next one, take another coffee break, then you see the next one. In other words, I couldn't actually even do this program until I had a fast print. I did it, but it was so boring because it took so long to print all these things. Okay, thank you for looking at the code. I hope you will. There's a much more thorough description of this code on our blog, which is wecodemakecode.com. And I hope you will visit there. Thank you so much. Grandma out.